I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series, featuring conversations with me and many other guests who have agreed to accept Suge's Collect Call. Suge will be putting periods to all question marks while answering everything hip-hop fans worldwide want to know. History will be made and documented in real time, each week on Collect Call with Suge Knight. Suge and I both want to hear from you, so if you have any questions or input, please be sure to contact us at Breakbeat Media, authentically hip-hop. Welcome to Collect Call with Suge Knight. This is Global Tell Link. You have a prepaid call from Suge Knight. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, style 5 now. Hey. What up, sir? How you doing? Good with you. Man. Man, every day is a blessing. Yeah, man. Every good. day. Good, good. Let's 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 jump into it, man. Um, you know, people waiting to hear from us, and especially from you. So, you know, there's been a lot of guys like going on other podcasts and stuff and like kinda talking about things. Hey, Dave, we go. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do exactly like this. And I you know, I ain't trying to cut you off with this like this. Yeah. One of the reasons we're on board with the collect call is for the culture and to try to make things situations better. I'm not gonna really entertain anything negative. Sometimes we gotta address certain things and we had to address certain things when we first started. And I'm quite sure we still gotta address certain things. But more importantly, let's focus on what can we do to make these situations better. And at some point, you know, I wanted to take collect calls. Well, they don't got to call collect, but they can call in. And they might have questions that we give them advice regarding this business, getting bullied, uh, <laughs> whatever's mental health. These are serious issues that, as a whole, and as a culture of hip hop, we're supposed to do our best to give back. And I was thinking, man, we'd be talking and we'd be on some real sh- And like, one person can't do it all. We, gotta, we, we really got to learn. It's a team effort, you know? Definitely. I don't go to be playing sports, football, basketball. Somebody got to block. Somebody got to catch the ball. Somebody got to get the rebounds, whatever it may be. And... Every person in my life shaped it one way or another for the best. And even when it comes to people who say negative things about me. Or about the culture. I look at it like this. I can only speak for me. Somebody said something negative about me. But somebody, you know, I had a lot of employees. And I hired a lot of people that other people wouldn't hire. Mob Pyru gang members like 32-year-old Heron see Knight as a man who gave his friends and family jobs. I work. I pay taxes, too. And And this is what Suge taught me. I ain't never had a job before in my life until I started working for Suge. And I gave people opportunities because I felt I was blessed to be able to have a business. So I wanted to return the favor and give people opportunities. But even the people that ever work for me or any people, if they really knew me and I know me and they had bad things to say or something negative about myself or death row, I'd rather be able to take out my time and think about something they did good. 
and guards with the they say it gotta be something they did good for me. Maybe they got my car washed. Maybe I dropped some money out of my pocket and he I didn't know it and they picked it up and gave it to me. I'd rather focus on the good about these people instead of the bad they done. And that's been said. I didn't get here by myself. You know, when you really look at it, I said there's a lot, but it's the truth. There was only two blacks on our street when we first moved to Compton. And, uh, it was, all the other families was white. But as time changed, and more blacks came, started moving in, those group of guys taught me a whole lot. So, what I mean by that is that, shout out, go to TC. If it went for TC, TC was five years older than me. And Jumbo was his brother, he was even older than that than I was. But TC taught me a whole lot. I mean, from doing everything you should be doing good, or doing everything you should be doing bad. And my father was one of those, well, he is, my father was one of those pops who, he wants you to be hands-on and learn. So he wanted me to go against and play with the older boys. He didn't want me wrestling or playing basketball or football or boxing with somebody my age. He always say, go with the guys older than you. He could tell him. Don't take your light on him, get on him, you know? And then we had like the Petersons. We had the, even the Rays. The Rays, I found the accountant, it meant something. The Rays was like, the father was Duro Ray. He was the coolest, handsomest dude in the hood mm -hmm. with the most beautiful wife in the hood, right? Everybody says. And she was our teacher's aid class. Darren Way was my best friend. We did everything you can think of from hanging out. He used to call me his bodyguard. Daryl was older than us, and Derek was younger than us. But the Rays taught us by example. You have a good family, and it was. Then, you know, we had the Chisholms. And for his cow chisholm, he was the gangster of the family. Then you had Jeff Chisholm, who taught me how to flip. He was in, we were in elementary school, but I was, they was older. But me, TC, Kenny Robinson, and Jeff Chisholm was at Maryland High School being in the talent show. Doing flips with my sister in the group. And you had the Robinsons. You had Dale, you had Smiley, you had Walker, you had Kenny, and you had Danny, who's was Disco. You had Glenn Christmas. We used to call him Big Al. I can go all the way down this list, but these guys kept shape us who we became. You know, even Jay, CJ. We go on and on. But we had a guy named Howard. Howard was way lower than us. They used to call him Lil Howard. Lil Howard was rich. He's ghetto rich. He hustled. But he treated all the young kids real, you know, extremely well. If the ice cream truck come by, Lil Howard gonna buy everybody ice cream. I learned from that. If he used to go to Aikens, he gonna buy everybody souls, chips, whatever you want. You catch him at Sears, cause you know, Sears before the Compton swap me, he gonna buy you whatever you want. Jealousy killed Lil Howard. One of the so-called homies, well he was a homie, but he ended up killing Howard. But that to be said, I always told myself, I worked hard to become who I wanted to become. And um, 
if I ever made it, I was going to come back and get my people jobs and help them any way I can. I know when I was in college, I should come back to visit my mother. And before I get on the road, it was a um, hamburger stand right next to Payless on Long Beach Boulevard. Billy, Fred, all the, a lot of homies would be up there one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, just sitting there. And I'd come through and say, hey, man, y'all hungry? I didn't have much, but I was going to buy them something to eat. Was gonna shoot. So I was going to get back on the road. The one thing I always knew that you got to definitely give back. Well, the first time we went on tour, it was a crank tour. It was Joe Hines, Stanley Pitts, Heron, Buntry, Neckbone, Lip Dog, Twin, which was Ronald, it was uh, Endo, oh, Hook. Hook Johnson. Real Andre name is Andre Johnson. The reason why I say that when I say that name, Hook was a year older than me. And that dude right there was always a real stand up dude out the neighborhood. Had a real strong, strong mother. And I remember we were like, you know. We played little league baseball together. We played little league football together. And that says a lot because a lot of guys from my side of the country, you had to be tough to go play little league sports because it was always more quips than it was homeless. So I told a lot about your character if you showed up. Hmm. But I remember I was ta I would take my my people on trips and take them places because to show them a great time. I remember mean, they had, I don't know if it was, it was like a Jack the Rapper or something in Orlando. We all went to Orlando. And you know me, I ended up finding a pretty girl, a bad. <laughs> I'm going to the room for a minute. So I took all the homies, they get some bread. I gave everybody some bread. It's to the mall and buy you some gear. Everybody brought their gear. Hook came back, knocking on my door. I'm like, damn. You doing something? I go open the door, it's hooked. I'm like, what's up, man? You get you some shit? He said, yeah, man. He was like, we all went and bitch to the mall. I know you can go to the mall. I didn't know if you needed some so I bought you a pair of socks. I bought you some boxers. I bought you some, you know, some hygiene in case you needed it. Out the money I gave him to go shopping, he still thought about me to buy me something. I'll tell you a lot about the type of love we had for one another growing up. Yeah. So that's been said. That helped shape what we became, who I am. A lot of you know I've been a lifelong entrepreneur, but what you might not know is when I was coming up in the ranks, money wasn't constantly flowing as fast as my dreams were. I used to wish there was a way I could get some financial momentum without a lot of stress. Kind of wish we had something like earning back in the day. I mean, let's be real, life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn could be in your hands today with earning. So I know you're wondering what earning is. It's an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day, up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earning app and verify your paycheck. Then get your money as you work. There are no mandatory fees to you. You just get to enjoy your money earlier. Any money you access is automatically repaid from your next paycheck. For up to me, I'd use the money on a romantic night out with my fiance. She lives for those nights we dress up and take on the town. Join Earnings over three and a half million customers who've made the app a part of their financial routine. Download Earning today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in Collect Call under Podcasts when you sign up. It'll really help the show. 
Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. What's up with you, Dave? Man, I'm, I'm, you know, just uh, enjoying learning about, you know, some of your original guys, man, and and just growing up in the neighborhood, man. I know people are going to really, really be excited to to hear about about all of that. And uh, yeah, man, what else? What else on? What else on your mind today? I've been, I've been an actor since too, because you know, it was it was guys younger than me. I used to take out on private planes to go to Vegas and hang out and, uh, you know, like, Wax, Big Wax, he from, uh, he went to, he went to the pen probably in, like, 96, 97, maybe 97. He's still in there, shout out to Wax. Uh, Mikey Rue, one of my all-time favorites still around, Fleetwood, Black, you know, it's a lot of guys that, Really grew, and even 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 more so when we used to go places. Even Zeke, they called him Face. He didn't work for me, but at the same time, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. But you know, I opened up a a, a low rider shop. I put like close to a million dollars in the shop. It was one for me, and one for me to make profit, one for me to do anything. It was for my neighborhood, everybody on the east side, all the homies. And what's so crazy about that, the shop was called Let Me Ride. But one time it was doing really well. I remember I came up there one day and I see a couple of little homies taking batteries, putting in their car. Shot goes out the boomer, <laughs> putting in their car like to fill a battery to, for their low rider. And you'll see them there, oh man, my bad big homie, I know I'm still in the battery. I said, look man, you only need one battery? They're like, well, I said, this is your shot. You just know how to take one battery, and you know how to steal it. If you want 10 batteries, I help you put the batteries in the truck of your car, because this is your shot. Yeah. But you gotta remember one thing. Once all the batteries gone, and all the different you know, stuff is gone, you're not making money, how everybody gonna start paying their paychecks, get their paychecks. So that was like the whole learning experience for us. But, like I said, the thing is the most dangerous is, is, is to put that behind us and uh, start fresh. And one of the things I wanted to start fresh about is that uh, Tupac. You know, it's been a long time since I was able to just talk freely about pot because we were so close. And the thing is, Pac finally getting justice. And justice for Pac is this. It's not so much about somebody getting punished or going to prison. It's the fact that if you was around Pac and you had your hands into trying to destroy him and we got the receipts, it's a problem. I said this from day one. We're going to start talking about it. See, jealousy is worse than hate. When your name start ringing, people get jealous of you. You know, if a person hates you, you can be across the street and they can see you. They can see, you know, I hate that mother. I hate him. Or I hate her. Them. Right? Hmm. And that's that. A jealous person destroy. Because jealous person, you don't need mind every time they're awake. Hmm. Every time they're thinking you in their head. So they want to destroy you. They want to get rid of you. And that being said, I remember me and Pac had a conversation in my office. He's like, look, man. I don't have words to say how close you and I are. I trust you. Got all the love in the world for you, and I'm with you. You build Death Row. He said, but I'm on Death Row, and I'm here to show everybody that 
We family. And I'm going to help deal with that folk, make it even better. He said, when we go in and do this album, he said, by the way, you can age it. I'm like, what the f is that? And he tell me, oh, life is death, at the death or something. I said, oh, man, come on, pot. I said, man, this, uh, I had an idea of what I think is a good name. He said, what? I said, all eyes on me. And you know, pocket arrogant motherfucker like me, so you can expect, he's thinking like, all eyes on me. Like, it's my album. What you mean, all eyes on you? I said, not all eyes on me. I'm saying, you saying all eyes on me because it's all eyes on you. He said, all right. All eyes on me. I said, you got to look at it. You're in prison. You should have never went to prison. The people who really did the crime didn't happen to, but you don't want to end up prison. I get you out of prison. Now you're on death row in the studio. So it's all eyes on you, which is all eyes on me. He said, well, look. All eyes on me on my album. I want everybody in the death row to know we're a family. And I'm going to make sure we all be on the album. I'm going to make sure I'm going to participate with every person, any artist on this label, regardless of how big they are, how small they are. They got some out, they don't. I'm going to have them get out on the album. The first person he started calling is obvious is Snoop. Yeah, Snoop wasn't shaking him, but Snoop would be busy. Well, I'm over here. I'm going to get some weed. But Pac stayed on him. Snoop, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. So here come the studio and make an incredible, you know, song together. And if there's a cure for this, I don't want it, I don't need it. And then he makes sure he do a song corrupt. Live in this mother Thug Pound, Biot, Corrupt, Daz, McAvey. Make sure you do a song with Daz. He'll see Joel. Come here, Joel. I'm gonna got something for you. He'll turn around and do a song with Miss Shalane. He'll turn around and say, this Danny boy you was talking about, the little 16 year old mother. Yep. Come here, Danny boy. Only thing you gotta do is sing this right here. I ain't mad at you, blah, blah, blah. He go with Danny boy. <laughs> You know, by him doing that, that made everybody just so close. He even did sh at first he found, before he found out and you know certain things about Dre, he did it with Dre. Even though they never was in the studio together, like the movie said, but it was cool, right? Hmm. But far beyond all that, when Pot got bigger than everybody on Death Row. That's when the jealousy kicked in. I guess that's when the pot kicked in. That's when the plan came up. Because it'd be a time where it still is. I got, you know, everybody know how I felt about Snoop. But if Snoop was coming up, people would come around and say, Snoop, let me get an autograph, Snoop, let me get a picture. Once All Eyes On Me came out, people would come up, hey Snoop, where's Tupac? Could you get them to come over here and sign my autograph or take a picture with me? Or if they see the dog pound. And they'd be like, how, how do you feel? Uh, that's the best thing in the world. You get to hang around Tupac. Everything was Pac, 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 Pac. And they seen Dre. They didn't ask a question about, man, you did the chronic. Could I take a picture? They're like, hey, could I take a picture? Because you know Tupac, but I really want a picture with Tupac. You know how to find him? Everything was just from everybody else to Tupac. Hmm. And I think jealousy would made I think up. And the reason why I'm speaking on it because we should never have to go through this again. All right, y'all. So I keep hearing people talk about microdosing. I didn't really know what that was until we hooked up with our friends at Microdose Gummies and they sent me some of their products. So I've been learning how these gummies can really help you. 
So you know that relaxed feeling you get after a nice hot shower or when your to-do list is finally finished? Well, that's what microdosing helps you feel. Now, everyone has their own way of using these products, whether it's to help get you focused, get super creative, or even just get a good night's sleep. One gummy can do the trick. Microdose gummies really put you in that sweet spot between CBD and THC. So I feel great without feeling like I'm not sharp. And these gummies are becoming a staple in my house. Even my fiance has discovered them with just half a gummy. She's got a lifted mood, a creative boost, and manages her anxiety. So to learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code COLLECTCALL to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Try them today. Just go to microdose.com, use code COLLECTCALL. You can find the links right here below in the show description. That's microdose.com, code collect call for 30% off microdose gummies. You know, Dave, when um, each time somebody get killed and hip hop and pass away, it makes me think about all the people who pass away and even the people in hip hop. You know, pockets definitely for some of this. You know, left eye. He's just an incredible person. And when you look at it, it's like when Nip died. Grammy nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle shot and killed outside his own clothing store in Los Angeles. I felt that now too. I thought about Pac. Even a little young dog dude or whatever. I didn't know him, but I felt that. I go on, on all of them, right? One of the things that made me really think about Pac when um, Takeoff, when Takeoff got killed. TMZ is reporting rapper Takeoff, a member of Migos, is dead. Shot to death at a bowling alley in Houston at around 2.30 this morning. That hit home. That hit home so much because he was one of those guys pushing the line in the industry. Like I said, I didn't know the young dude, but from the outside looking in, he was out there like Pac was out there. And it really made me think about it so much because um, they say Pac was his favorite rapper. And they said his mother and sister said he was rapping a Tupac song before he left. So when that happened, man, that really put me in a place where I didn't have too many words for too many people. So I decided to, uh, I'm in prison, what could I do? So I decided to only do what I could control what to do. So I got somebody to control some portions of takeoff. And the first three ones they did, he had glasses on and you really couldn't understand his look. So I told the guy who did it, I said, hey man, it's good, I look out for I need to keep it in this. So I finally found some photos where you can see his eyes. These guys work real hard on it and they did an incredible job. I mean, it made me sit there and think like, damn. So I wanted to get to question, to, you know, all set. And, Cardi then, and so I got all the respect in the world for Cardi because like I said, you know, that's one of my favorite entertainers. So I tried to, I didn't want to go straight to her. She's married, so out of respect, go to the private channels. So I kept trying to get people to get uh, offset. Hey. What up, sir? Read writing history is never good. But words is very powerful. If we work together, we'll do better. And I remember the first time I decided to start that road. I knew it was going to be a situation where we had to go further with our people. And Death Row was the first place, the first company, first anything you see 
the same colors, red and blue, in the studio together, eating together, traveling together, and most of all, getting along with each other. So now we're at the point where Call of Jealousy trying to rewrite history. Let's see how we can do to make a big difference in help. And that's once again, it's true about certain things people say and certain things we, people talk about. Some of the things are a little exaggerated. Some of the things is watered down. But I know when I went to um, jail in 96, the county jail, it was at a point where I know I was going to do time. Going to do time, I tried to put Snoop in a position to keep the guys focused on making great music. So when I told the lawyers to tell them to come visit me, I was in the blood module. They was coming to visit me, and they was dressed like they was doing a motherfucking Boys in the Hood uh, movie with all kind of blue rags on their head, their pockets. So the sheriffs, the sharks was like, it was so much of an uproar, they was tripping to the point where you, know, you had me and Muck was on a visit and, and people that, you know, visiting us, they was like, when they come on the road, we getting on them. And then there was other crips on the other side saying they wanted to kiss their cripping head. So that little episode made it impossible for us to have a conversation. If we, did, if we was able to have that conversation, they probably have been doing some great shit for Death Row and they, they wouldn't have been jumping around on the 9 and 9 and 9, right? But that's the past. But what we gotta be able to do is, I'm talking to the NFL. Every time we turn around, you guys reporting, I mean, uh, promoting gang activities. It's people still losing their lives over gang activities. It's people who went to prison at 17 years old and still in prison today from gang activities. When you have the NFL letting it feel it's okay for people to use their platform and wear a whole suit of gang banger tires or if the NFL have Snoop on or any other guys on, they like, Cause this, cause that. They think it's the fat. It's different when you get guys who live in the hills and they gang banging inside their house than the guys who's running around the streets. So we gotta, we gotta like stay more focused on that and change that narrative. But most of all, like I said, when I went to uh, jail in '96. A lot of people stepped up and they were doing what they need to do for death row. I appreciate that. Did a lot of people take it differently? I'm quite sure they did. They probably did things that they thought I would do, but I wasn't the same person in the same state of mind that I was when I was a young person. So that being said, once death row was successful, I enjoyed everybody on death row. My artist was happy, everybody had money, nobody had nothing to be mad about. So I had a homie named Rick James. Well, Rick James was like, man, I talked to the feds. They said, Lawrence, ain't nobody going on. They can't fuck with you. Otherwise, you would give me a heads up. So I was focused on enjoying Death Row and making Death Row a distributor one day. And that's why Pac was having his own label. Stripper by Death Row, Snoop was having his own label, Stripper by Death Row. That was the plan. But like I said, I'm not gonna knock the people who stepped up in position and tried to help Death Row. It was just a different path that I was on. I was enjoying life so good and everybody was so happy, there was no need to be violent. So I know a lot of things came more violent when I went, to, went away to jail and went away to prison. And I'm not saying I never was violent. It was just a different time for me. That being said, we'll do better. We'll be able to come and stand by each other 
And when people get in trouble, most people don't stand by you. As you know. You have 60 seconds remaining. I'm quite sure Puffy feels that now. All the guys who was hanging on with him and tight and tight and partying with him those secret parties, ain't now I'm stepping up. But look, a few guys I forgot to mention that I, if I got a lot of, forgot a lot of people, it's a lot of people I f with. I can't fit everybody in. But E Rock, Chucky, Ballhead, y'all not forgotten. One thing for certain, one thing for sure, we're always going to be about the culture. If anything I can do to help, business wise, anything I can do with advice, Anywhere I can help out, you can always call in and I will give you the truth, no matter what the situation is. I'm not going to run from the narrative. I'm not going to change the story. And I will never rewrite history. Beep.